Lead Time is a podcast of the Unite Leadership Collective, hosted by Tim Allman and Jack Kalliberg. Lead Time taps into biblical wisdom for practical solutions to today's burning issues. Each podcast confronts real-time struggles facing the local church in a post-Christian culture. Step into the action with the ULC at uniteleadership.org. This is Lead Time. Happy day. Welcome. Welcome to Lead Time. Uh, Tim Allman here. Uh, Jack Kalberg will be back with us next time. Today, I have the privilege of having two partners in the gospel from the Christ Greenfield family of ministries, namely our school, Nathan Stevens and uh, Principal Tanya Kalendo. How are you guys doing today? Doing well. I yeah, love it. This Monday. is happy Monday. Happy, exactly. This is Nathan's actually maiden voyage on a podcast. This is going to be so fun. So we've been we've been having a lot of guests that are talking about education now, whether it's from seminary, bivocational leadership, um, and now all the way down to preschool to K through twelve ministry. We need more more Lutheran schools. And it really is a foundational uh, ministry of our entire Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod that has catalyzed us over the years and led to a lot of amazing, amazing growth. So I'll ask you, Tanya, first, uh, what do you love most about Lutheran schools and what do you love? Why do you love leading them? Oh, this is an easy question, Tim. Uh, it's people mm. and it's always been people. And I have to admit, maybe my favorite people are the kids, but the adults aren't too shabby either. So I, I absolutely love uh, as I go and, and learn about Lutheran schools across the country, you know, because we meet up at conferences and you get to visit other places. What is so unique is that we, everywhere you go, you feel that love of Jesus when you step on a campus um, where the Lutheran church and school are just you know, committed to that ministry. It's a, it's a vibe. It's, you know, I hear it all the time. We feel like family, you know, Christ Greenfield is not unique in that. It's, it's just really a thread that runs through uh, Lutheran education. And it's so excited to, you know, come alongside families for more than just the education of their children, right? It's, it's sharing life, yeah. pointing them to Jesus and caring for them. All those things are, are happening. Yeah. And Nathan, you are a longtime uh, partner in the gospel, grew up in Lutheran schools, and now have been a Lutheran educator uh, your entire professional life. Uh, what do you love about teaching in a Lutheran school, brother? Well, you know, it's everything that I could ever have wanted in the sense that what is God has called me to. So being in Lutheran schools from preschool all the way through high school and then on to college, um, there was never a doubt in my mind that pursuing uh, teaching in Lutheran schools was going to be um, my draw and where God was leading me towards. So I've been blessed the last seven years to teach in a variety of capacities in Lutheran schools, and it's been um, truly a blessing so far. Amen. I love it. So I talked to a lot of pastors, uh, Tanya, that say, man, I don't know how you guys do it. Uh, I would, you know, schools are messy and it just sounds like a lot of extra work. I'd, I'd greatly prefer, uh, and I'm not going to throw any of my brothers under the bus, but I've, I've heard you all talking. I'd greatly prefer to be a part of a, a church that does not have a school. For me, the benefits um, of community, caring for families, uh, reaching the the broader community, especially people that don't know and follow Jesus, the benefits far outweigh the uh -huh. the risks or the the hurt and and the the pain. So, um, talk about that relationship, Tanya, between the church and the school, and how it's such a, a beautiful partnership. And even we talk family language, even more of a marriage, right? Oh, of course. And you know, we uh, really look at. Our ministry focus that is shared, and you hit the word on the nail on the head, it's families. And so, you know, even recently when we surveyed church families and school families, there was a lot of crossover. And when you're asking them what their needs are um, as they raise up their kids in the Lord and what could be unmet needs in their household, you know, they're saying that they are trusting this community to come alongside them. And that says a lot. So I think what, you know, happens a lot of times behind the scenes are we really are looking at all the resources that we have at Christ Greenfield as a full ministry when we're coming alongside families. Uh, you know, recently there was a family that was going through something tough. It was real easy to reach out 
um, Pastor Michael happened to be standing next to me when I heard and to, to give him a heads up and can I offer you at least someone that can go to the home or to, to do that. And, you know, without hesitation, similar to conversations we've had through the years, it's a, yeah, of course. And so, um, and, and I think the key is even if a family is unchurched or even if a family worships someplace else, uh, you, Pastor Tim and, and Pastor Michael are their pastor as well, that they are a part of our family because they're a part of the school. And so it's like kind of looking at our, our mission is aligned, our vision is aligned. And so it really is about how we have, you know, different uh, strengths, different um, things that we offer that coming alongside together, you're just stronger um, and how you can care for families and they know it and feel it. And so I'd say to pastors, you know, we talked about this. You know, Barna in 2018 did some research and they asked um, Protestant pastors, you know, who was in charge of the spiritual formation of the kids? And, you know, 96 percent of the Protestant pastors said the family. And then when they asked, how do you come alongside the families? The number one answer was we have Sunday school and questions like I help families with difficult conversations about your culture where we come alongside families, that was the that was the bottom of the list. And so um, Barna also asked them about the schools. And um, really, the pastors who I think are seeing that a school on your campus is way more than one hour. It's the and, mm-hmm. Sunday school and, you know, and, and the things that we do in confirmation that plus, you know, all of our families are the things that can happen at a school. All of that together is many layers of love, many layers of care, many opportunities to point to Jesus. I love what our Lutheran schools offer. Anything to add to that, Nathan? You know, my experience at Christ Greenfield specifically, it's been such a big takeaway that there's one word that I always use to, um, I guess, describe the relationship between the church and school and really what the church is doing in the grand scheme of ministry. And it's uh, dynamic. So when I think about um, what the church and school's relationship is, it's dynamic. There's a partnership, but it's a partnership where both parties are like moving forward. And it's not just two separate parties. It's two working as one, um, reaching that greater goal. And that's why we're often going different places with our ministry and really expanding and growing. So it's definitely been a blessing to do that all with Christ Greenfield. I love yeah, and Tim, it. The, I would add, ahead. it's in the DNA of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. You know, right. it, it really was that the churches and schools started in America um, to come alongside immigrants, Swedish immigrants, German immigrants, right? And then, you know, I believe it was the late 1800s, there were more schools than churches. And wow. you could not have a charter with the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod uh, as a church unless you had a school. So this is not crazy. This is this is who we are, who we've been since we've come um, to North America, to the Americas. And so it's really getting back to the roots of doing this together because families need Jesus and uh, church and school working together for that is mighty and powerful. I mean, think about this growth. You, you wrote down some of the stats uh, in 1872. So uh, the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod started, what, in the late 1830s uh, into the 1840s. We were kind of booming. Uh, but by 1872, the Missouri Synod had 446 churches and 472 schools. I told you so, there were more schools. That's awesome. Yes. Uh, you couldn't have a charter. So we need to go back often to go forward and reclaim. Uh, you know, I think a lot of times the lament is we're losing our kids. We're losing our kids. Well, let's do something about it. Yeah. Let's start and, more schools. Go ahead. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, I got this in, in, in a research reading a book about the history of Lutheran education. And they really said it was coming alongside families because they needed it. But it was not just Lutheran families. It was other non-Lutheran families because we know the mission field. Right. Nathan is nodding because we know the mission field. I mean, our stats right now at our school you know, our preschool especially, you will have a lot more unchurched families or families that maybe were in the in the in the past. They value a Christ-centered education, but they don't maybe have some strong spiritual rhythms. When those kids bring home that Bible, or they go home and say the prayer that they learned in school, we've had so many more parents say that 
that convicted me as a mom, right? They'll say like, gosh, and, and we cannot forget um, that the number one mission is in your backyard, your school, if you have that there, because that's your community and they know more people in the community. That's a community really powerful. It really is. They're little evangelists, aren't they? Mm-hmm. They they carry the love of Christ and the simple story of Christ, and it impacts it impacts mom and dad. Praise be to God. Uh, the way we also view kind of the church and school partnership and a number of the family of ministries, really the body metaphor is helpful. From First First Corinthians chapter twelve, Romans chapter twelve, it's it's more of this: all the different systems of the body working well together. And you could say that education, uh, be it formal to informal, as partnered with the church in the school, this is kind of the heart and soul, the, the blood that courses through the veins of our present and our next uh, generation to come. So it's so, so powerful. Leading through leading through uh, COVID was difficult, Tanya, Nathan, mm-hmm. a variety of different perspectives. Let's just uh, hit pause and stop on the COVID reality. What did we learn about leading a Lutheran school through COVID, mm-hmm. Tanya? Community matters. We were committed to what does our community need? We did a lot of surveying um, and uh, we pivoted. I promised I would never say that word again, but here we go in this context. I'll, I'll mention it uh, because our, our priority were the kids and the families. And so our teachers were heroes and um, our staff were heroes of what they did to support and come alongside families. But community mattered. And that's what we were. We were we were your, your family. And just like in the church, I mean, valuing uh, individuals with different perspectives, as there was a lot of different ideas and a lot of, uh, gosh, anger and fear. Never a good combination, <laughs> mm-hmm. just coursing through the entire community from, uh, yeah, a, a wide variety, the whole spectrum of we should shut it all down. To, uh, I can't believe you ever shut anything down. And I was proud of our team. And I think many schools that that uh, are now on the upswing and thriving on the other side of COVID, we maintain that that people matter. We will respect everyone with different opinions. And leaders are going to make decisions, um, and we pray that you respect how we're trying to to weigh a variety of different opinions and do, at the end of the day, what is best for kids, right? Mm -hmm. Anything else to add, Nathan, through COVID? What did you learn? You know, so I relocated. I took my call to Christ Greenfield um, about three weeks. I was extended a call about three weeks before COVID hit, and I remember thinking, Oh man, what a new opportunity, what a new journey God has for me. And then when COVID hit, I was like, I wonder, I wonder how this is going to impact everything, like whatever comes next. And as we know, it it had great impact. I would say that one of my big takeaways from being part of this community during throughout all of the COVID would have been grace. There was just this endless amount of grace that I feel was shown from our leadership um, to the staff. And then that was something that was an expectation set for staff to families, meeting people where they were. Our administration and leadership did a great job of meeting teachers where we were because, you know, there was still a wide range of fear, anxiety, stress, a lot of a lot of stress. And so with that. Um, knowing that our leaders were there to support us and provide grace and, and show grace for us in, in whatever ways they could. And then that expectation was set forth for how we were to interact with families and our community at large. So it was definitely a blessing. I praise God that that was your experience, Nathan. Uh, let's do the proverbial pivot since we're on schools and move toward uh, a conversation about micro schools. We really believe mm-hmm. that every church, regardless of size, could be a church worshiping 50 to 100 people, or it could be a church yeah. worshiping over 1,000. Every church has an opportunity to start a micro micro school. So take us on, uh, and maybe Tanya, kick us off and then move over to Nathan. Uh, tell us a story of exploring a micro high school here at Christ Greenfield. Okay, so hopefully our story is way longer than anybody else's story. 
<laughs> because it, well, I looked back and you, you see God's hand in it all. But, you know, hopefully we've been the trailblazers, the pioneers to make it easier for other people. But it was my first year here, uh, 2015, end of the year. Uh, I had uh, done a celebration chapel and Ed Lamb, a parent, uh, somebody who's been very involved in our campus. He's on, you know, our board of directors of the church. He just sat in the pew after that chapel and came to me and said, we need more of this and we should have a high school. And so it's my first year here. I have to tell you, it was a little bit like, hey, I'm trying to figure out preschool through eighth grade. But, you know, I kind of packed that in my brain. And um, I think, Tim, you connected us to Dr. Jack Price, who has been an innovator and a pioneer in education um, and in his many, many roles. And through those conversations, we started just to have conversations. And then we had consultation. We brought in Dr. Uh, Bernard Bull, who, you know, currently is the president of Concordia, Nebraska. So, but he wrote Missional Moonshots. And that's really all about innovation in uh, education. And so we had, we gathered a high school task force, you know, and through the years we were managing growth because a lot of people were coming to Arizona, through, you know, through the years. And so we didn't even know where we'd put it. We almost pulled the trigger in 2017, 18, but what we were missing is what we ended up getting this past year. We really needed a, con- a consultation with experts because I would say what, what um, I'm not a risk taker by nature, and I felt there were too many unanswered questions because too much was at stake, right? And so with that, a couple of things happened. The pandemic happened, which totally paused that process, but it also opened the mindset of what could be, which I don't think people were necessarily ready for. Personally, my, on, my uh, middle son um, had moved to online education as a high school student. So mm-hmm. through the last couple of years, I kind of had the mom hat on. And so I knew what if we had some tech as a piece of it, I kind of understood what worked well and what I'd want to do better, right? So I'm kind of gleaning all of that. So you have this stirring, you know, God working. And the beautiful part was, is, and I'll let Nathan speak of our consultation. When we went through the initial consultation, we pulled up our notes and the model was like almost spot on that we wow. had dreamed about, but I don't think we were ready or the community was ready. But I have to, I found this email I sent to middle school teachers. I have to share because it cracked me up. This is what I wrote February 4th, 2016. I'm a little bit giddy because of the education model that we are considering is progressive and innovative. It's not the traditional model for a high school. And so that's where we ended up. And I just think this beautiful, just God kind of walking us through and other people for so that we, I feel so ready. I feel like it's not a risk where um, we are not sure. It's a healthy risk of just um, we're set and ready to welcome mm-hmm. families. So Nathan, do you want to talk a little bit about what um, Soaring Education, they were our consultants and they just and- opened that branch. So that's really new. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I want to get to I want to get to soaring, um, but this is a leadership podcast, Tanya, and okay. uh, timing timing is every. I mean, it's the Lord's yeah. timing, and it's to, to wait timing. on to wait on Him. Um, I really feel good about how we were patient uh, to wait on His timing and, and to wait on His His people. And now, Nathan, if you weren't here because you're now taking a, a heavy leadership role, mm-hmm. we needed we needed Nathan Stevens uh, to be here. So tell us about uh, the soaring journey up to this point. Yeah, Consultation, for sure. Nathan. So, well, one, I got to say, I'm just so thankful to have been here again in this specific season. So when I've talked with um, Principal Clendon, when I've talked with Mrs. Hollandon, our vice principal, and so many others about the process and how much time has gone into the development and the praying and the thinking and the discerning about what could be to, to have been here at 2020 and to have seen like, you know, we have hopes of opening a high school. That was so exciting for me personally. And then to really be here as we were kind of diving into the consultation piece, which was again, that that really big um, necessary component in order to move forward. So we're so thankful that God provided that um, opportunity for us. So as we've met with Soaring Education Services, we have had a wonderful partner in just 
from the beginning, breaking this into two pieces. So the design and then the build of the high school. So as we went through the inner workings of clarifying our vision and mission, and that was a unique conversation because we were working with an individual who had experience with launching schools and working with this company that was launching schools. But it was so unique because we were so aligned and we are still so aligned to Christ Greenfield as a full organization with our mission and vision and values. So it was a unique experience to go through the design and say, we understand the steps that we need to take, but we're never going to waver from who we are and our identity in Christ Greenfield as an organization. Um, so from working with the design and building out um, handbooks and working through just the general thinking and workshopping of ideas of, you know, what space do we have on campus? How are you going to utilize the space that you have, the resources that you have? What's your staffing going to look like? What is your vision for students? That was really the most important and most exciting part is what's your vision for students in the high school setting? How are we going to meet these students, partner with their families, and provide high-quality Christian education for them? So that was a wonderful journey, and that was just over this past school year, and going back to last summer, moving forward into the from the design to the build, where we really started to um, look at what could be and what will be. And it was really exciting. And I think Mrs. Clindo would agree too, Principal Clindo would agree that when the initial date was set for like December 16th, our project with Soaring Education Services would be over. That was kind of exciting and stressful at the same time to think that we were going to be ready to launch a high school this past December to open for the next fall. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So there are so many different models right now. I, I, one of my favorite Jack Price phrases, and he'll be on here in the next uh, couple months, is it's not about content, it's about content curation and getting the student the right content toward their respective respective needs. I think there's a lot of a lot of folks who are looking at high school today and viewing it as, you know, let's not waste time and money as we move into the rat race of college. Let's give mm -hmm. kids some vocational opportunities mm -hmm. to, to kind of test. And in partnership with the church, we have lots of different entrepreneurs, business owners that can invite our kids into a variety of different vocational experiences, all with a kingdom mm -hmm. Uh, Jesus uh, lens. So talk to us a little bit about how our model, the micro high school is uh, is a little bit different, maybe even a little bit of a of a hybrid. I'll tell you the way I talk about it right now, and then I'm going to see <laughs> if, it, if it makes sense to what you guys are saying. So I kind of think about it because I was a homeschool kid. There's a little bit of the independent learning that mm -hmm. is necessary for our students. Uh, there also is uh, technology that will be utilized, and then there will be the in-class kind of more, slightly more formal component, uh, all with recognizing that, hey, we can shrink the day. The, the seven-hour school day doesn't necessarily, especially as you move toward independent learning in high school, doesn't need to be that long. And so we can give you the nine to noon or noon to three type of experience. So that's a little bit of the way I'm talking about our micro high school, yeah. fill in the gaps. I'm sure I was wrong about something, Tanya. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'll, I'll start, Nathan, and then you can fill. So, well done, Pastor. Yeah, you you hit a lot of the key things. And I would say, really through this whole journey, is we realized high schools have not changed for generations, yet the world of work has changed. Um, kind of our, our access to technology and the quality of things have changed. And uh, we just really wanted to pause and say, we think there's a need here that we can really address. And again, I'll put on my mom hat, seeing that my son was at a Lutheran Academy that had online and in person, and that his education was top notch, world class. And so it, I think taking that into effect, we really thought, we think time and the hurriedness of life is a common um, concern for families. And so you want to, your time is valuable. And so are there some families where they would like flexibility in where their time is spent on campus? And um, or do they want some flexibility of when they may work at home? Because they may be committing their time to some other priorities. It could be um, as an athlete who travels every weekend. It could be someone who um, has a part-time job and that's really important to them. There's so many reasons where they're kind of reallocating their time. And you know, the whole that saying of work smarter, not harder. I think in time, in some regard, is you really could have some focused pieces um, 
that uh, you have other priorities. So, Nathan, why don't you tell a little bit about like maybe the typical week as we've kind of thought in our brain and what's an in-person class that we just really want to get around the table to talk about and what things people are on their own um, to sort of work through. Yes. Alrighty. So in a typical week, as uh, Principal Palindo had shared, it this is really an opportunity to partner with families to provide high quality Christian education while also allowing for families to be families and prioritize some of what they find important as well, whether that is clubs, whether that's athletics, whether that's fine arts and musical performance, whether that's travel or ministry or mission work or things like that. The traditional high school setting makes it really challenging to fit so much of a busy family's life into a week. And unfortunately, we only have so much time. So when we were developing what a week would look like, our goal was to provide those Mondays and Fridays as work days. So they are days where our on-campus, where on-campus learning is available and families can utilize it, but it's not a required expectation. In some cases, it is dependent on each individual family as they work with the high school to develop the best plan for their child. So again, for instance, if a child, if a junior in high school has a part-time job and their work hours are from 12 to six, well, obviously they're not going to be at the learning center past 12. That's Mondays and Fridays. Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, the way that we're starting is very concise and consistent and it's a very good routine. So our learning studio is open from roughly 8 o'clock to 3 p.m. During that time, their required time on site is a 9 o'clock to roughly 10.30 class, small break, and then a roughly 10.45 to 12 o'clock class. Those two classes that are going to be taught totally in person are Christian learning, theology at the high school level, and then our leadership development course. And that goes kind of into the DNA of what we do at Christ Greenfield, leadership development, discover, develop, deploy. We're really excited as we've kind of been building out the curriculum and the books that we're going to be utilizing to support students in their journeys through kind of becoming leaders um, in this high school setting. We thought that it was important to provide those two courses because those two courses would so much identify with who we are as a community and then the high quality education piece that we also value so much is going to be um, discussed a little bit in our partnerships. That's good. So what do you say to the family that says, well, I want, I want sports and I want some of the extras. How are we answering that question right now? Sure. So for some of those kids, club sports is their primary and they may or right. may not be playing with their high school. And so at this time when we open, and we, we kind of take that year by year, we do not host any school, high school level teams. However, that could very much be in the future. We have to kind of follow what the Arizona rules are for high school athletics. And so wherever your records are is where you can participate in sports. However, there's even more than sports. We're working with Valley Lutheran in Phoenix, Valley Lutheran High School, for some social connections with chapel, with small groups, with fine arts. And so we're very thankful for that partnership. It's a fellow sister Lutheran school now in the Valley that we want to connect our kids. And so um, that's super exciting. And then our online partner is Orange Lutheran online school. And they've been, this is not their first rodeo. They are very highly respected in our community, um, very professional. Nathan and I and Mrs. Holland Donor, who's not with us today, but she's a very important person in our trio in this consultation, are very confident of the quality of education the kids will get. So in our partnership, you can do different levels with your online provider. They'll get the platform, the teacher, and um, you know all the assignments. But what we're doing is we will have content coaches available on campus. That will, that's their area, that's their gig, you know, like Dr. Trey Cox, uh, who teaches at Chandler uh, Gilbert Community College, will be our content coach for math. He'll be there to help students out and um, just provide that in-person support. So what sometimes is missing in um, uh, just an online program is community. And so that hybrid brings community and friendships with peers, community with other, you know, organizations. Like we hope to do mission trips and service projects, but it also gives you teachers in person. Mr. Stevens is humble, but I'm going to tell you he's an outstanding educator. And so I feel very confident that he's going to help monitor. He's going to help 
you know, come up with plans if kids need a little bit more independence or a little bit less. You know, you kind of walk your kids through that, you know, as a parent, Tim, right? Like whatever the, whatever they need in that support, community, being that bridge to parents. Um, that that hybrid piece is really, really valuable, um, especially because every student will have their own plan working with their parents and Mr. Stevens of, you know, when we expect them on campus and when not. And maybe sometimes we're making a recommendation of a little bit more because we're here to support you. Um, but uh, this God has provided outstanding partners for us in all these little niches that we know what we can provide on campus is that community piece and people in person to offer support. Amen. Exciting times. If people want to find out more about the high school, uh, Christ Greenfield High School, uh, where could they go to find more information, Nathan? Right. So certainly on our website right now, we do have updated content. There's a form that can be filled out there to be added to our contact list to get monthly newsletter updates or bi-monthly newsletter updates. Uh, beyond that, they can certainly email myself or Ms. or Principal Kalindo at tkalindo at cglschool.org or nstevens at cgl.org or contacting our school office, swinging by, stopping in. Uh, we'd love to chat and get to know people who want to know more about our high school program. And if you're a pastor interested in, in partnering Soaring Educational Services, just put it in Google. You will find them and uh, you'll have a lot of fun working with Jack Price and his team. All right, let's get a little bit higher level as we close our conversation today. What are the principles in building a collaborative school team that make room for dreaming new dreams, starting new ventures, just like uh, our micro high school? Give us some of those principles. Yeah. So if you are a community that pursues excellence, which that's a part of us. You absolutely have to keep asking what if. And I think that's that constant kind of, you know, what it, you know, what could be improved, what could be better, what could be added. And it's asking everyone. So I've been in the classrooms this week doing the student surveys. And my favorite part is when I say flip it over, draw a picture or write something of a dream that you have for this school. This is your school. And we surveyed parents um, and we, you know, we talked to staff. So I think really having that, that culture in your community of, you know, we are always looking to see like what could be possible. And there's a couple different people that love that piece a little bit more. And Tim, you and I know we have that shared kind of thing. So we just try to create that community. Um, and I would say, um, to be big and bold and brave when you're talking, you know, and that you never know when a great idea will come from and that you just are hearing people out and, and, and all those things. And then I think really, you know, a foundational piece of leadership development, how you lead us, Tim, is self-awareness. And so we really dig in that people have different giftings and bring your gifting to the table. You know, we want to hear, um, um, how that can help serve this community or how that can help build something new. And uh, Nathan touched on this. We make decisions based on faith, not fear. That's huge. Um, even for me, that I, I admitted I'm not a natural risk taker. It doesn't feel risky when Jesus is wrapped all in it, right? Because you know that he's got it and you're just going to show up and keep moving, keep pressing forward. Um, and so I think that's in our, uh, our culture. And so that really creates some amazing things to, to happen. Yeah. I think a lot of times people, you, you could have this kind of caricature in your head about a, a ministry like Christ Greenfield and a number of new things spinning off like Unite Leadership Collective or, you know, different schools, micro schools and think, oh, well, you know, they, they can do it. Here's, here's the one thing I would say, build, measure, learn, uh, fail forward, start small. Hopefully it's not too financially, you know, risky. Uh, I think, you know, that's where in our story with the high school, we could have got out ahead of our skis there a little bit if we tried to pull the trigger before mm -hmm. uh, the Lord really brought the right people in place and, and brought the right level of, of health for uh, not just financially, but but relationally from a, a teacher perspective. And we're just united and now now is the time. But it's because we have a build, measure, learn mindset that's been embraced by the entire entire family of ministries. Anything else to add there, Nathan? Any other principles? I would say 
jump into partnerships, be open to collaboration. I think that um, mm-hmm. it's really easy, especially over the past few years to think like, am I alone? Or like in a ministry sense, is our ministry alone? And we know maybe better than some that that's certainly not the case. So part of the reason why our high school launched for next year is at the position where it is to be ready to go is because of partnerships and the openness to collaboration. And we have been um, definitely blessed with good experiences and great interaction as we've been trying to create this model that's going to be excellent for for many different students and families. But um, as different churches are considering, well, well, what's possible? What could we do? I think it's always being open to, is a collaboration possible? Is a partnership something that we're ready to do? <laughs> yeah, we can't do much of anything on our own. And just looking back over the story, how many partners, collaborative uh, consultants, et cetera, that we have worked with, those that have gone before that we just say, hey, we need your help and we're going to take your your recommendations and apply your recommendations to, to our community, our context. So, so exciting. Uh, you both are a gift to the body of Christ. And uh, I'm, I'm so humbled to be on ministry with you and to see, you know, some people may say, well, we need more a brick and mortar high school somewhere down the line uh, here in the East Valley. We need another we need another Valley Lutheran here in the East Valley because uh, well and what we say is maybe in time. Yeah, just give us some time. We'll wait on the Lord and uh, and we're going to start with our micro and see if the Lord wants to do something more macro. Uh, but I pray that you would take us up. If you are a pastor, take us up on in the invitation to just start exploring uh, the power of school ministry as a major part of your discipling of students, young people, and families in general. So thank you so much for being with us today, Nathan and Tanya. You're a gift. And this is Lead Time. Sharing is caring. Get the word out. Like, subscribe, follow follow wherever it is that you are consuming podcasts. And uh, let's go on mission to make Jesus known, multiplying disciples of the young and the old uh, to make Jesus' name known in the midst of the dark chaos of this day and age to bring the light of Christ to those spaces. Jesus loves you. We love you too. We'll see you very soon on Lead Time. God bless. Thanks, Tanya. Thanks, You've been Nathan. listening to Lead Time, a podcast of the Unite Leadership Collective. The ULC consults and brings together cohorts of congregations to build the culture, systems, and structures of intentional discipleship multiplication. To go deeper with us, create a free login on uniteleadership.org for access to exclusive materials and resources. Thanks for listening and stay tuned for next week's episode.